All righty. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hi. My name is Karina Austin, Coco, Coco Rina. You can call me Coco, you can call me Karina. Whichever one works for you. And I am here to host tonight's workshop. I'm so excited about this. So tonight we're gonna be doing a three in one workshop, which essentially means that we're going to be taking one yard of fabric. And if you don't have a yard, it is okay because I don't have a yard either. So if you don't have a yard of fabric, that's fine. But we will be doing three projects with one piece of fabric. So the materials you will need tonight is a scrap shirt. Well, not even a scrap shirt, a shirt that you love, okay? Because if you were anything like me during quarantine while you're stuck in your house, I'm sure you have been in your closet and you've been like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like this, and I don't like this. So. One of those items that you said you don't like, and I like this shirt, my mom bought me this, so thank you mom. I like the shirt. So all those items you said you don't like, today we're gonna to teach you how to revamp them and all of that good stuff with just one simple project and one simple move. So what we're gonna need, like I said, you're gonna need a shirt. I have tweezers just so I can thread a little bit easier. Snaps, which are just little small scissors. If you have a seam ripper, then you can use a seam ripper. I have my sewing machine right here. And that's just because you can use a sewing machine or you can use a needle and thread. But I have my sewing machine just so if some people do have it, some people don't. If you use a needle and thread, listen, it's gonna take a while, okay? It's gonna feel as long as 2020 has felt. So, but I have both, I have both. So then you're also gonna need hand sewing needles. I have two of these because if you have ever ever, ever used hand sewing needles, I promise you, as soon as you put them down, they will get up, walk away and move to New York. And you will be like, where's my stuff? I am not joking. So I have two of these because I know doing all this, I'm going to misplace it. I have pins. Don't worry, I have more pins than this, but I have my little pin magnet. And then I have my thread. All right, and then I also have a ruler here. If you do not have a ruler, it is okay cool little fact, your thumb from right here to right here, from right here to right here, just ignore my nail, is an inch. So you can also use that as well. So I have that and then most importantly, how could I forget the fabric? Like what? So this is what I meant when I said I don't have a full yard. So you can get three projects out of this. I promise you, I promise you. So before we get started, just tell you a little bit about myself. Once again, I am Karina. I am SCAD alumni. I went to the Atlanta campus, graduated in like 2017, I think. And then after that, I went and I opened Fibers, which is a secondhand fabric store. And the whole point of that with me opening it was just to show people that to be sustainable, it wasn't like... You don't have to do a lot to be sustainable, essentially. Like your fabrics don't have to be 100% cotton. You don't have to wear long dresses. You don't just have to wear linens and cottons. Like it's, it's more a variety than that. Being sustainable is literally as easy as going to the thrift store for clothes. It's as easy as not throwing your product away and finding a new way to reinvent it and finding a new way to love up on the clothes that you already have. If you're a designer and you're looking at this, it's as easy as not throwing your fabric away and donating your fabric, all of that good stuff. So that's one of the main reasons I started it. So I was hiding this, but bam. That's the first project. <laughs> the first project is taking out your sleeve and replacing your sleeve with your scrap fabric. So the reason that I love this so much is because it's really simple, really easy, and you can literally do this with everything. Like let's say today you're taking out sleeves and putting in new fabric. The next day you can do it to jeans. Like we all know flare jeans are coming back and layered products are coming back as well. So it's as easy as cutting the bottoms of your pants off and putting new fabric around the end of them. Like it's super, super, super simple. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So this is one of the projects. So the very first thing that you wanna do is of course, get rid of that sleeve, right? We need to cut that sleeve off. So what we're going to do 
is we are going to make sure our shirt is iron. If it's not iron, then just smooth it out, you know, roughly, roughly pat it down if it's not iron. But like I said, the first thing we're gonna do is cut this off. So before you start cutting, we need to make sure that it is in and as smooth as it possibly can be. So we see the seam right here. We wanna make sure that we're cutting that seam. So instead of cutting it both at a time, we are going to make a slit in it using our magical scissors. We're going to make a slit and then we're just gonna cut along, right? So if you have any questions about my SCAD experience, what I'm doing, this project, feel free to ask. I am an open book. I made up some questions for myself. I'm like, I don't wanna interview myself, but I will, okay? I definitely will. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a little slit, slit made. And if you don't have fabric cutting scissors, you can use regular scissors, but just know that this is going to take a little bit longer and your, your edges may, you know, swag and surf. Your edges may just go like this a little bit. So if that's okay with you, then just let it go. So the first thing I did was I made a little bitty slit. So now I'm gonna take it one layer at a time and I'm going to cut around my seam. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you are just getting the sleeve and you're not getting the seam allowance. So I'm just gonna cut it, cut it, Cut all the way around. Cut all the way around. And what that looks like, I'll show you what seam allowance looks like. So Mons is a technique that they used that was surged. And that's what that looks like. So if we can see that little part right there, that's the seam allowance. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna leave this part in. So don't cut this part out because we're gonna use it as a tool later on. So as you can see, I already cut the front of my sleeve. So now I'm just gonna go all the way around, keep going all the way around and I'm just gonna continue to cut. So some parts may be a little bit thicker than others, but I'm just going to continue to cut and cut and cut. Making sure that my shirt is laying flat so when you are cutting into fabric, one of the great things about cutting into fabric is that you need to feel your fabric as you're cutting. So let's say you're cutting and then it gets a little bit harder to cut. You're cutting something else as well. I've done that plenty of times where I'm like, why is this not cutting? It was just so easy. Turns out I didn't cut like three other layers or something. There's something underneath something else. Like, so as you're cutting, just pay attention to the ease that it takes you to cut. So now my shirt is sleeveless, where honestly, if you wanted to rock it like this, go to the gym, you have that option as well. So now I have my sleeves right here. I'm gonna put this shirt, I'm gonna put my shirt to the side. And now I'm going to cut along my middle seam, my arm seam. I'm going to cut along that. I'm going to do the same exact thing, making sure I don't get all of my seam allowance. And I am just going to cut down the middle and I'm almost done. Oh, I'm supposed to inter be interviewing myself right now. Okay, Karina, how did you discover SCAD? Um, so I discovered SCAD by, I went online, looked at art schools in the South and SCAD was one of them and they were like the top rank. So I was like, I wanna go there eventually. But the first time I went to, the first time I wanted to go to SCAD, I didn't go to SCAD. So put a pin in that. So the next thing we're going to do is now your sleeve is cut out, right? So now you have this amazing looking sleeve that you just cut out. So now what we're going to do is I have my fabric, I just pulled up my fabric from my board, from my little um, purse, and I'm going to lay it flat. So when it comes to the fabric that you picked, if you have more of a lightweight jersey knit fabric, just know that your fabric is going to roll on you. So what that means is, I'm assuming that everybody's shirt is made out of a knit or a jersey knit because most t-shirts are, honestly. It's what they're all made out of. So what I mean by rolling on you, it's going to do this little thing. 
let me find a better example. Here it is. It's going to do this. It's going to roll a little bit. It's going to act a little bit difficult. All you have to do is give it a stern talking to and tell it that it's going to lay down straight and you're going to put a pin in it. So now what I'm doing is I'm just laying out my fabric on my, I'm laying out my sleeve on my fabric. I'm, a, I'm situating it so I get the most out of my fabric. So one thing about being a more sustainable designer when it comes to fashion and all of that good stuff is you have to worry about the placement of things. So you have to make sure that it's placed the correct way so you get the most amount out of your fabric. So right now I'm just laying down my sleeve. Bam, it's laid. And then I'm just going to pin it. So I'm just going to go through. So my fabric is a little bit more of a medium weight fabric. So it's a little bit harder for me to pin. So I'm just going to pin it through. There it is. And you don't have to listen. It doesn't have to be a pin every three inches. You don't have to make, you don't have to put 50 pins in here. Like you don't. You can just put it on your stress areas and call it a disease. okay? So, bam. My pins are in the most important areas, honestly. So now what I'm going to do is very simple. So this is what you needed your marker for, or if you didn't have a marker and you had um, a fabric marker that washed away, you can use that too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace out my sleeve onto the fabric. So one thing about this, if you are using a sewing machine, you already know about seam allowance, right? I'm assuming if you're using a sewing machine, you already know about seam allowance. So if you are using a sewing machine, make sure you count that in when you're tracing out your fabric. So what that looks like is, if you're using a sewing machine, I'm not going to go directly where my sleeve is and mark it. I'm going to go a little bit above because I have to sew it. So I don't want to create a smaller sleeve than what I already have. If you're using a thread and needle, bam, bam, do your thing. Just, just follow the sleeve and you'll be okay. But if you're not, I will show you what that looks like. So right now, all I'm doing is marking above my sleeve. If you want to get technical, which you can, this is just for fun, but if you want to get technical, you can pull out your ruler, you can whip out your handy ruler, you can be like, you know what, I want my seam allowance to be a half an inch, and you can lay it down, and you can go like that, and you can do the whole method, right, you can dance and do it, but you gotta do all that, like, you don't have to do all that right now, we are revamping clothes, as long as you, before you break a rule, as long as you know the point of it, you'll be okay. Oh, so what, what was my question? What was my story? Okay, so, oh, the first time I went to SCAD, the first time I tried to go to SCAD, my mom was like, no. And I was like, but girl. And she was like, but no. I was like, okay. I was like, okay. So then I went to another school for two years. And then while I was there for those two years, I was like, you know what? Bump this. I'm going to SCAD. So I changed my major. And I told my mother. And she was like, girl, by this time, she said, do what you want to do. So, okay, put a pin in that. Put a pin in me interviewing myself. So I have made, if you were sewing, this is what it would look like. If you can tell, I have laid it down and I have went a little bit above it, a little bit above just to go and mark for my seam allowance. So I have went a little bit above just so I can sew on this line right there. So once again, if you're not using a needle and thread, girl, don't even worry about it. I, if you are using a needle and thread, don't worry about it. If you're using a sewing machine, then you may want to worry a little bit about it because your sleeve may be a little bit smaller. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Oh, okay, so anyway, I went to my school for two years and I was like, you know what? I want to go to SCAD. So my mom, she was like, do what you need to do. So I started like a little blog for like five minutes. Like literally, it, that blog lasted a very short amount of time. I wish I would have kept up with it, honestly. So I started my little blog. This is when Channel Orange came out. So I remember making like doing work for Channel Orange and being like, you should wear this and you should wear this with Channel Orange. <laughs> okay, put a pin in that. 
So now I am getting to the bottom of my sleeve and I'm still doing the same thing, just tracing it, going a little bit over. So now, if this matters to you, there is a thing called a hem on your clothing, right? So if you can see from my lovely purple shirt, I, this fabric was folded in and then hemmed, correct? Right. So depending on what fabric you're using depends on if you want to add a hem or not. You do not have to. It's once again, it's up to you. But just know, depending on what fabric you're using depends on how it will look. So if you're using a knit to replace a knit, your fabric is pretty much going to roll up on you on the end. Like that's going to happen. So you may want to fold it back and hem it. But once again, that is something that's all up to you. I am just marking it, going along, minding my business, doing my little dashes. And now I am finished. So my whole sleeve is now marked. So now all I'm going to do is take off my sleeve, take it off. If my pins want to come off, there it is. And now, kabam, I have a new sleeve pattern. So I have something that I am now going to use. So now, if you can guess what we're going to do, we're going to cut it. We're going to cut this sleeve out. So now I'm just going in and I am cutting it. Oh, okay. So what was, what was my story? Oh, okay. So then, oh, so I started a blog and I was like, because you had to have a portfolio to get into SCAD, as you guys may know. So I started a little blog and you also had to, good, had to get a good portfolio to get scholarships. So I started a little blog for a hot little minute and that's what I submitted. So in the midst of SCAD deciding where they wanted to accept the girl, they did. So in the midst of them deciding all of this, I had already changed my major. Like I had already changed my major. I had already changed my classes, all of that stuff. And my friends were like, girl, why would you change your stuff? You don't know if you're going. I'm going, sis. That's why I was at, like, girl, I'm going. They were like, they ain't even send you an acceptance letter. I was like, girl, they ain't got to. I'm going to be on SCAD's door in the classroom, okay? <laughs> they may have to call security, but I'm going to be there. So then, of course, I got in. They didn't have to call security on me. And the rest was history. Well, actually, no, the rest needs to be saved for my part three of my interviewing myself. Okay, so now I am moving and grooving. I have cut out my sleeve, bam. So now my sleeve is finally cut out. Look at how cute that is. So I do suggest also with this project, if you are replacing materials and when we're doing this, make sure that you are using like a different type of medium of fabric, like push your limits. Do something that's unknown and something that you don't know about, like mix leather and knit, put a wool as a sleeve, just experiment, honestly. So now I'm going to show you two parts of how you do this. I'm gonna show you two parts. So if you have a needle and thread, I'm gonna show you how to stitch it. And then if you don't, if you are, just have a sewing machine, just throw it in there. So I'm going to lick this and then take my hand out. So the easiest way to thread a needle, because I kid you not, it's a little bit difficult. You will be sitting here for hours, is do not thread your needle like this. You will be sitting here for days and hours. I'm not joking. What you need to do is lay your, lay your thread like this and then put the needle over top of it and it moves a lot easier. And then also a good, tea, a good key is to cut it with some sharp scissors just to make sure. Also, make sure you can pick up your needle too. So yeah, so now I'm just going over it and if, and then bam, it should, ta-da. So, that's how you thread it. That's how you thread your needle a little bit shorter. Um, so the fabric that I have, I have a faux leather here. It was scrap fabric from Fibers, honestly. Um, so I really, I really liked it. It was like, so I got this donated and it was just not enough to do anything with. So 
yeah that's what we have i have just a scrap scrap piece of fabric it's not a yard it's just faux leather so my fabric is a medium weight fabric so as you can tell when you look at this sleeve it's a little bit it's, it's stiff like it's a little hanging like it's a little it's stiffer than my original fabric so now that i have double threaded this bam here i am going to go ahead and tie my knots and once again if you have a sewing machine just go ahead while we're doing this thread your machine all that good jazz i must i'm gonna do this a couple times because you need to All right, so bam, I'm going to cut off my access fabric. I mean, my asset, my access thread. And so when you are stitching and when you're sewing or you're doing anything, when it comes to fabric, you always want to make sure that your two right sides are together. So this is the brilliant side. We're going to sandwich it together. This is my not so brilliant side, which can still be used depending on how you get down. It can still be used. So I am going to line it up. So it is straight. So with this fabric, because it is a leather, it's a little bit more difficult for me to use a needle and thread. So when I'm using a needle thread to give you a demonstration, you may see me like hammering in with like my tweezer or something like that, just because it is a little bit more difficult. So, bam, it is in there. Okay, so now I have it in there. So now when it comes to threading this, you have, when you're doing uh, hand needle and thread, there's a couple different ways. You can either baste it, which is just going straight across, but the most strongest one you can do is sewing over it, is threading over it. So what that looks like is I am literally, let's see. I am literally just going, uh oh, my hand's the same color. I am literally just going over my knee, over my fabric, over that little seam. And then I'm coming back in from the same exact side. So this is when I use my tweezers because it's a really thick fabric. So this fabric is a little bit easier on the machine to work with than it is to thread it hand and needle. So, bam, I went directly over it. And now what I'm gonna do is take this, go over it, and then bam, do the exact same thing I just did without stabbing myself. Sometimes you can use the fabric as a little help. Bam. So this is what I meant by a thread is just a little bit time consuming. So I'm gonna do one more stitch just so you guys can see what I mean. And then I'm going to throw it on my machine. Okay, so what, what else was I asking myself? I forgot now. So here I am, throw it over and then bam. So let me show you what these stitches look like. And this is honestly going to be one of, this is one of the seams the one of the hand stitches that worked the best for me when it comes to stitching anything by hand and I wanted to stay. So this is my little hole, but that's what I meant by going over. So each time I went through, I'm behind now, and now I'm simply going back through my fabric. So if you did decide that that's how you wanted to sew this, by all means, you can do that. For all of these projects, you can do this. For each and every single one of these projects, you can do this. So what I'm gonna do right now is cut this and just throw it on my machine for time saving. So if you have any more questions, feel free to throw them my way. So all I'm doing is of course, making sure that it matches up which you should always do before you start something and then putting it on my machine. So let me make sure. So, yep. Looks like my machine is getting something a little bit caught. 
So that's another thing when it comes to using your machine is sometimes your threads will get a little bit caught. So when you do have difficulty with your machine, the easiest thing to do is to look at it, see what's wrong with this. My thread fell out. So I'm just gonna briefly re-thread it real fast and then move on. Okay, so well, oh, so I got my acceptance letter for SCAD, was super excited. And at this point I was in Statesboro. So I was super excited about moving to Atlanta. I did not wanna to go to the Savannah campus. Nothing wrong with the Savannah campus. I just wanted to be in Atlanta, honestly, because I love Atlanta. Okay, just rethread that. I'm going to put it back in my machine. And then I'm going to sew it back down. All right, there it is. Yeah. And then any other time your sewing machine's not working for you, just just pray it, just pray on it, just rub it, ask it very nicely. There's been plenty of times where I was at SCAD and I was pulling the all-nighter for something that I probably should have did hand, and I had to pray over my sewing machine. I had to be like, please, please work for me. Okay, so now, bam, we have it all stitched out. Let me go ahead and take these extra strands out because we do not need them. Ta-da! So if you were throwing it, sewing it by needle, you need to make sure that you got all the way over here. But here I am. I can press this open by my hand. Oh, blah, blah. And then, bam. So now what I'm going to do is pick up my shirt again. And now I am going to set my sleeve. I'm going to go ahead and cut my needles out, my thread needle out, just because. I want to press it open. I want to make sure that it's pressed open. And by pressed, I mean that this, that my seam is open. That's what I mean by pressed open. So if your shirt is anything like mine, that means that it does not have a side seam. So if we look on the side, there's no seam. It's just kind of there. I don't have a side seam right there. So the easiest way to identify your side seam, of course, is just to fold your shirt in half and kind of see where it lays. Because most of the time, if you've already ironed this, your, your um, side seam will just pop up automatically. So I am going to set my sleeve in now. The easiest way to do this is to turn my shirt inside out. Because once again, we always want our right sides to match. So now I am going to turn this inside out as well. So now I have my cute little sleeve. Look at that. Uh, I put it on the wrong way, but look at that. Look at my cute little sleeve. So now I have my adorable little sleeve and I am going to set it in place. So now what I'm doing is just making sure, let me put it in there first. Now what I'm doing is making sure that my middles match up. So that side seam part that I just sewn I'm making sure that it's right in the middle. And it is. And then I'm going to take my marvelous pin and I am going to pin it. Once again, when you're doing this, you wanna make sure, there it is, that you're right on it. So I am going to pin it again. Okay. So then most of us have a shoulder seam right here. So another thing I'm gonna do is fold my sleeve in half because I have a pretty um, cooperative fabric. I know that my cap sleeve is probably gonna be, is right here. So now I am going to put this in the middle. So one thing about a sleeve is that a sleeve has ease. So what is ease? Ease is going to be extra fabric that you need to move. So one thing about fashion that you learn in school while you're in college is that fashion has a lot to do with science. I'm not science, I'm sorry, math. 
fashion is a lot of math. It's a lot of anatomy. Like it's, it's a lot of how your body moves and how your joints move and all this stuff. So for example, if your sleeve didn't have ease in it, you wouldn't be able to do this. Like, you know, if you got a, you can't do it. Like you just, you can't, you can't do it just because the sleeve is too tight and your stitching is going to get open. Your stitching is going to rip all of that stuff. So with ease, ease allows you to actually move your sleeve and have your shirt not buckle on you. So when you're doing this and you start to notice and you're like, well, hold on, this isn't matching up perfectly. Like I'm not able, hold on, almost lost my, I almost lost my hand, my hand needle. It almost walked away on me. So when you're doing this and you start to see that you have a little bit of ease, you have a little bit of gather, I'm like, you're just like, what is this? It's okay, it's supposed to be there. What matters is where you place it. So you wanna place your ease at your cap and down here. So these are the two places that you wanna place your ease. You don't want your ease to be on the side right here. You don't need it right there. So you have to think ease is essential. So you don't need it right there. Where you need it is the top. So what that looks like is when I say ease, I have all this extra fabric and I'm just like, what am I gonna do? Did you take art classes? No, okay, so did I take art classes in high school? No, actually when I was in high school, I studied physical therapy and I studied occupational therapy. Like when I was in high school, I went to a technical school and that's what I studied. So, when it comes to taking art classes in high school, I think it's more so about um, skill. I know people that did take art classes in high school and they were, they were just more skilled. Because one thing about SCAD is SCAD is a very much, it's higher education, it, it's higher education. So when you walk through the door, they, ex they definitely expect you to have the higher education about yourself. So, with that being said, is that if, you, if you're going to SCAD and you're studying whatever you're studying and you're doing whatever you're doing, you should have some prior knowledge before you walk through the doors. Like you should have some prior knowledge. They will happily teach you everything. My teachers taught me things that I didn't know just because I didn't go to art class. I definitely got taught them. Like I definitely got taught. They taught me everything I needed to know, but you definitely have to have like anything. You just have to be prepared for it. So I wouldn't say that they give you a higher to, I, I wouldn't say that they give you a higher possibility to get accepted because I didn't have art classes. I like, when I got to college, I was in anatomy. Like I was studying like physical therapy, occupational therapy. I didn't have it. To be honest with you, I can't draw. I can't draw. I, listen, life of drawing was a hard class. I can't draw. But it's more so about what you're capable of. Like, and if you try, that's more so what matters. Okay, so bam, our sleeve is set. So this is something that, yeah, we needed a billion and trillion pins for, okay? We did need a lot of pins for this, but our, our sleeve is now set. So if you had that ease, if you had that in your sleeve, you needed to make sure my sleeve, my ease is added right here, which is where it's needed. And there is some ease right here as well. So the next technique that we're going to do is literally the same thing. Excuse me, it's literally the same thing. If you have your needle and thread, which this is all I have, it's all I'm gonna use right now. Once again, you tie it. So if you're doing a needle and thread, one of the things about this and picking it out and deciding what thread you need to use is one, of course you need to make sure it's a, it's colored the same. I'm using a neon just so you can see a little bit better. But also when it comes to deciding how much thread you need, when it comes to needle and thread, my opinion, I think it's better to go like, let's say you think this is really long and this is really short, go right here. <laughs> go right here in the middle. Like if you think it's too long, just take it down some and do that. Because when it comes to needle and thread, what will happen is that it'll get caught up in stuff. Like you'll be stitching it and then your thread will get caught up and it'll just be too much. So then you have to cut it off and start, not even start all over again, but it's just a lot to handle. So one thing I will say is when it comes to sewing with your hand and needle, don't try to be Speedy Gonzalez and just, you know, take your time with it. 
So I'm going to do the exact same thing and I'm going to go over. So when I was at SCAD, did I experiment with fibers, sewing crochet before enrolling in SCAD? No. <laughs> no, you guys, no, I didn't. Um, when I, how I ended up knowing that I wanted to do fashion is, of course, I have the same story where as a little girl, I used to be like, oh my gosh, I want to make clothes. I want to do this. Like I had, I had that story, but more so what attracted me to textiles is when I was in school and we were doing our senior collections and everybody was throwing away all of this fabric or we used to do giveaways. And I used to be like, man, I feel like I don't think we should be throwing this away. Like, I feel like we can do something more with it. And then I started to look into it. I started to look into it and I started to be like, okay, I don't, I see something that, that that's not out right now, which is a secondhand fabric. So like, I see something, so let me do this. So um, I have friends that sew crochet. I have friends that do all of that. But to be honest with you, I've never, I didn't experiment with any of that before I got to school, before I got to SCAD. I didn't, I did not while I was in school, but I will say while I was in school and that's what I discovered, that's what I wanted to do, I did it on my own time. So we would learn stuff in school and then I would go to work and I would come home and I would be up on my phone, like looking at stuff. I'm like, okay, well, this works. I could do this. I, I would be up practicing stuff. So, in, so even though I didn't learn it at SCAD, that's one thing about college is that you can maneuver through different majors and discover different stuff as long as you take it on your own time and do your own research and make sure that you're experimenting and you're doing this and so you can just be caught up okay so we did the same thing perfect we did the same thing on this side so now if you're doing a needle and thread you would honestly just go all the way around if you look what I did is I used my seam allowance right here and I used that as a guide to cover me. So I knew for the fact that I can do this and do this and do this method. Oh yeah, you can definitely sew the, you can definitely sew the sleeve on the sewing machine. That's what we're about to do actually. So thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. So now I'm going to take this and I'm done doing a hand and needle for the people that are doing a needle and thread. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this on my sewing machine. So when it comes to sewing a circle on your sewing machine, one thing you need to do is of course, we're gonna insert it, right? We're gonna do this and we're going to sew, but as you're sewing in a circle and you're sewing your sleeve, you have to sew and then chill and then sew and then chill. Like when you get good enough to go all the way around, you can go all the way around. But one thing, one of my professors saw me at SCAD and she was doing something and she started to walk her machine and walking your machine is literally going like this and just making sure and just walking it by hand. She was doing that and I was like, why are you doing that? Because I thought it was a very novice thing. I thought it's what amateurs did. And she was like, no, everybody has to walk every once in a while. So it's okay. You don't have to do your sleeve all in one go around. You can literally start, follow your line, and then stop. Then move it. Make sure when you are moving it, make sure when you are moving it, it is in the needle position. So we're going to go make sure that it's sewn and then stop. Make sure that everything is right. Turn my needle, do my lift, do my tension. And then I'm just gonna sew it. So once again, you see, I stopped. I needed to move my shirt a little bit. Account for that ease. You also want to make sure that you have pins. So my professors will kill me if they saw this. So you want to make sure that if you are sewing it on a machine, you have pins that you can sew through. Because one of the worst things and one of the most time consuming things is stopping to remove pins. Quilter pins with the balls on them, depending on if you have a heavy duty machine or not, won't allow you to sew through. So now I'm just gonna go. Let me move 
this out the way because sometimes they can also cause your machine to skip a stitch, all of that. And I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna remove that. So what else did I do with gas? Oh yeah, so then and then my thread was unraveled. So now I'm just gonna redo this. So looks like if you're doing it by hand, I'm gonna be right up with you, okay? I'm gonna be right on time with you. And this is why it's important to have snaps around or your seam ripper or anything like this, because while you're doing it, you can easily just go ahead and replace your thread. That's why when I'm sewing, I always keep tweezers around just because it's a little bit easier to insert and do that whole little thing. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to continue to go all the way around. This. Now I'm just continuing to go all the way around with my machine. And I'm almost done, almost ready. So my machine is caught up a little bit. All right, so now when your sleeve is all sewn, we can take out these pins and we're done, okay? Well, you have another sleeve to do, but we can take out these pins and then look at you, a little designer. Make sure you did not miss the area. Look at you being a little designer on me. Okay. And now, kabam. Oh, I didn't, I didn't show you part of that, my bad. Remove all your little hairs, all your little strands. Make sure everything is straight and kabam. So now I have a shirt and I'm so cute, right? So now I have two sleeves in my shirt and that is our first project, right? This is so cute. So even if you wanted to take another sleeve and you wanted to do the same thing and you just wanted to add like another layer and go all the way around, you could do this. But like I said, when it comes to revamping stuff and it comes to redoing stuff, hold on, let me move my machine out the way. Okay, it was in the way of the shine, okay? So even when it comes to redoing stuff and revamping things, this small project and the tools that you learned from this, you can now move forward and you can use towards other things. So the first project is done, right? So we're done with this. We're gonna wear this tomorrow around the house. While we're, not while we're cleaning, because we don't wanna mess up our stuff. But we're gonna wear this around the house. This is so cute. So the next thing we're going to make with our scrap fabric, as you can tell, look how much I have left. And we're gonna make two projects out of this. I promise you that we're going to make a card holder. So card holders are one of the, my favorite things to make, honestly. And that's just because they don't take up too much time. It's not that difficult to make and because you can use it for a very long time. I'm all about containing stuff, right? So you can use it for a very long time. So we have made our shirt, which I'm still very proud of everybody. As soon as you get done with the other sleeve, please make sure you share it with me and Scat. I'm very excited about this. So now if you have a ruler, you can measure. So now what we wanna do is our, take our extra fabric, find a good little spot. I found a good little spot. I'm gonna fold it. I'm gonna go ahead and fold my fabric, crease it up a little bit, make sure it's where I want it to be. And then I am going to go two and a half inches up. So I'm going to just show you guys what this looks like. And once again, if you do not have a ruler, just use your thumb. Just use from this part to this part, just like I said, ignore my nail. Go from this part to this part and then just measure two. Measure two and then a half of your thumb. And then I promise you, you're all there. But I will show you with my Sharpie, but it seems like it got up and ran to New York on me. So I have another pin right here. Don't you hate when your tools do that? Like, girl, where'd you go? 
I just had you in my hand, sis. All right, so I'm gonna go two and a half inches up. And once again, this is super easy to go two and a half inches up. Bam. And then I'm just going to go four inches to the side. The pin for this. So two and a half inches up. One, two, and then four and a half inches over. Oh, I needed to finish interviewing myself, right? I'm sorry, four inches over. Okay, so yeah, I went to SCAD. Had the time I went, I went for two years. So transfer schools, I was a five-year senior. So I didn't graduate after those two years. I graduated in three years. Once again, that's okay too. So I have cut out, I have went two and a half inches up and four inches that way, just to show you. My arrow's a little bit messed up on the fold. So I've cut on the fold two and a half and then four. Ignore that, ignore that arrow. So then I'm actually going to add a little triangle at the top just to keep it cute. So you can really just make a triangle, honestly. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is yours. So just take it and make your triangle. It's gonna go in a little bit, making sure that it is still centered, all of that good stuff. Okay, bam. So then I just also created a little triangle on top. So now all I'm going to do is cut it out. So now cut, cut, cut. Cut, 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 and I'm going to cut. So now once you cut this, so now once you cut this, all you have to do is fold it. All you have to do is fold it and then sew along those seams. I'm gonna cut out this triangle too. I'm gonna cut this off. So now all you have to do is fold it and then bam, just sew right here and right here. And then eventually you'll get, let me open my, kabam. And then eventually you'll get a little triangle, like a little card holder. So you can put your little possessions in here. You can do what you need to do. I have a lot of these in my drawer and I keep these in my drawer and they hold stuff. So now you have one of these. This is the second project, right? Second project, we're all done. It's just that simple. So now for the third project, I get a lot of questions of what do I do with my scrap fabric? Like, what do I do? How I maneuver this in the third? Like, what are you going to do with this? And the easiest thing that you can do with your scrap fabric is put it back together. What that looks like is this. And if you guys have any more questions, feel free to shoot them. So this is me putting all my fabric back together. So what you can do with this is, and you can see better on this side, all you're doing is literally taking your fabric pieces and putting them and stacking them on top of each other. So you're literally just going like this and you're sewing and you're doing all of that. And now you're creating a whole new fabric. And the thing about this is, this fabric is so much more interesting. So imagine you do this with all of your scrap fabric, right? You take all of your scrap fabric and you stack them on top of each other. You stack them on top of each other and you sew and you cut and you do all of this and then you create a dress out of it. So now you have a patchwork dress or you make more sleeves out of it or you do all of this. So this is the one thing that I suggest everybody do with their scrap fabric. So when you have those small pieces that you just really can't maneuver with and you don't know what to do and you're just so confused, put them all back together. Put them all back together and see what cool products you can make. Because I know for a fact after I do this, because this is something that I already did. After I do this, I know that I'm going to put this together. I'm going to make a purse out of this. Or I can make a really cute jacket out of this. And it's really all just patchwork pieces put together. And it is literally the coolest thing. So the three projects we made, which you can do, and you can do this with a needle and thread. It's not that hard. So the three projects we did is we remade some fabric. We made a card holder, super cute. And then we re-put 
our sleeves. We put new sleeves on, on our shirt. And how cute is this? So you have your three projects in one and you can wear them all at the same time, okay? We can all just have matching fabric. So those are your three projects. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to let me know. And I would love to see these, okay, you guys? Please show me. Once you do it, let me know. I really want to see what you guys come up with. And I will definitely show you the purse that I make out of this because this is cute, okay? So that's it for me. And make sure that you guys share your things. And that's it. Have a great night.